snake oil, chrome snake oil, humbucker pickups in this cigar box base. Is that correct, Farley? That's right. All right, and then you have controls here on the end of the base. Can you tell me about those? Yes, I have a tone and volume for each pickup and then a selector switch. So you can go from the front to the back and then the middle is both of them. Very cool. Nice. And as you can see there from Rainer's uh, example, we definitely have a, a distinct difference in the tone between the bridge and the neck pickups. Awesome. Nice. Nice. Now, can, I, can you tell me, did you encounter, as a compared to building cigar box guitars, which you are a seasoned veteran at this point, mm -hmm. did you encounter any issues specifically with the cigar box bass? And if so, how did you, uh, how did you overcome those particular issues? Yeah, well, with the strings being thicker and heavier, I've, I've made the neck uh, about a quarter inch wider than I normally would. Um, just was really conscientious about the, the brace and the uh, neck going through, uh, making sure it was strong. I think strength was, was the biggest issue. Yeah. Very cool, very cool. Yeah. And so notching out for the pickups as usual, is that correct? That's yeah. right, yeah. Very nice. And I see yeah. that you also now we have some pretty sweet, are those dollar coins underneath the bridge, give it a little bit extra height? Yeah, just to add a little bit of extra height. Nice, nice. And, and now the back side here, because we had mentioned earlier, or you had mentioned earlier, excuse me, uh, at, the, at the tail end of the, the base where we, where we plug in the input jack, uh, mm -hmm. there's a, sp uh, a custom tailpiece done because you said you had originally started the cigar box base out with a tailpiece a lot like a lot of cigar box guitars with the tail yeah. coming out of the back of the box. So that you had, I guess, assumed that you had you had cut that notch in the back of the box and then the neck had come through. So how did you That's resolve right. that issue? That's right. Yeah, I had to, once we changed where the strings came up through the bottom, I cut the, um, the tail piece off and then I needed to come up with a cover. Yep. And so Jason fabricated uh, this for me. Uh, just to kind of go along, and it actually worked out to be a nice place for the button strap. Very cool. So actually, yeah. did we, can we get a close-up shot of that, Rainer? Yeah. yeah. Very cool. So this is the custom tailpiece that Jason, who does a lot of uh, does a lot of in the manufacturing department, up to and including working with the laser cutter and the plasma cutter, fashioned this uh, very custom, beautiful little stainless steel tailpiece. And then actually, which one more do you mind? Give a, a shot where the strings come through the back of the box. This is how Farley now, if you, if you can explain, just take a moment to explain to, for us how it is that you had the, 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 the strings come up through the tail end of the box. And again, it just for, if anybody missed it the first time, why it is you chose to do that? Yeah, originally the strings had, there was a tail piece and the strings came up through the tail piece, but it was um, because of the string length, uh, they, the un, the, the winding tapered off just before the nut. So we had to shorten that and so we went up through the body, which I think really improved uh, the situation. And um, so I basically just drilled through and put my little barrels there and there and strung it up. Very cool, yeah. very cool. And actually, do, do we mind getting a little, Rainer, do you play a little bit more for us here? Yeah, sure. I'll just play the blues out for you. Oh, and this is a um, da down drop D, so now you, you were tuned originally how, I'm sorry? We were originally tuned E and A, and that's standard for the bottom two strings of the bass. Uh, but now we're drop D, where you can play sort of as power chords, you know. You know, if you're playing with cigar box guitars, you know, it, that, that might be easier because the cigar box guitar is typically tuned to a power chord as well. So... Is there anybody that has a question that we can try to field for you? I may not be able to help you out too much, but Farley, the, the woman who's built this thing, can, uh, can certainly uh, do her best to, to, to answer any questions that you may have about your own cigar box base or something that you may be looking to build at this time. Go ahead and lay them on me if you got them. And <laughs> in that event, or think about them if you must. And then so now just a, a couple more specifics about this particular bass guitar. I see also that you have, you chose to use uh, mounting rings that mount the that the pickups mount to, and then you mount the pickup rings to the box. Is that correct? Oh, the these mm -hmm. the, the mounting rings. Yes. Yep. And yeah. and why again did you choose to use those? 
Well, the ma I, I need to pick the mounting rings to, to cover up the, the cut, but also I like the paddock just to go along with the you know, other paddocks in the net. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. the side markers you have yeah. there, and I see the bridge as paddock as well. That's right, yeah. Very cool, yeah. very cool. And nice, <laughs> very yeah. nice. Well, we I don't see any questions yet, but we got a shout out from our buddy AJ Gaither. Hey, AJ! Oh! He's at a rest stop in Scranton, Pennsylvania. <laughs> On his way back to Kansas <laughs> right now. Awesome. So, very nice. cool. It's good to see you, AJ. We had a request for uh, Seven Nation Army by the Black Stripes. Oh. Uh, White, <laughs> White Stripes. Stripes. <laughs> White Stripes. Black Stripes. Black Stripes. One of the Stripes. Yeah. Um, I have to do it. Oh, yeah. No pressure. As you can see, we got Farley cigar box base, two string, got a white oak neck, got the pad oak for us for max, for, for some accents, got the fret side fret markers. She's done it up with a couple of snake oil chrome humbucker pickups, one in the neck position, one in the bridge position. Uh, again, why would you want to have those two particular setups? Uh, the two different pickups, um, sometimes in different genres, you want a different amount of tone. Like if you're doing a punk man, you might want a more mid heavy tone with overdrive and if you're doing some more jazz like stuff uh jazz fusion or funk um it's sometimes nice to have the lower end and less tone um but also i'd say for like slap bass which is also in funk that that's another thing that you might want to use the treble tone for you're more of a percussive sound yeah which is something i think is really interesting that rainer's touching upon is what's beautiful about these instruments that we all build is that they're not specific to one genre of music one style of music you can play anything that you want on it especially with the cigar box bass that you built which by the way is super awesome thank you yeah dude so again we have a cigar box two, uh, two string bass built by farley played by her outstanding musician son rainer uh and for whatever it's worth my name is glenn we've got ben running the controls thank you very much ben thank you for the shout out aj Farley. Yeah, this we, has been great. Yeah, Miranda, thank you very much for tuning in to Cigar Box Nation TV for this Thursday, June 9, 2016, and I hope to see you soon. sorts of ideas. In upcoming broadcasts, it would look better to have the host standing up the whole time. <laughs> so thank you. Y'all did great. Thank you. Good work. Nice fun. Can't see any of it. Um, yeah, the second, it takes a few minutes for mm -hmm. the process to occur. <laughs> um, and I didn't have the audio on for the first 20 <laughs> seconds. Sorry, Raina. So this is all visual. <laughs> And then actually you guys started talking. Yeah, and then I finally a minute in like, oh shit. Oh was muted. god. <laughs> <laughs> the one rip I had prepared was muted. <laughs> this little speaker sucks, so I don't expect the, the bass always sounds like it's crap through it. At least it comes through. Did you encounter as a to building Sarah Oscar's which you are really? a seasoned veteran at this point. Yeah, seasoned veteran. Seasoned veteran, yeah. This is how far now it Close-ups. And then the, um, the phone jam. Yeah. Musician sub controls. Thank you very much, Ben. Thank you for the shout out, AJ. Let's see how this came. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thank you very much for tuning in to Sarah Oscar's TV for this Thursday, June 9, 2016, and I hope to see you soon. <laughs> ben, how many frames per second are you pushing out? Uh, 60 or 30? Not 60, possibly not even 30. Yeah, because I was looking looking at, you know, uh, open source broadcaster recommendations. Uh, yeah. Throughput is, is choppy and it said 
uh, if you drop it to 720 uh, DPI at 30 frames per second for you know motion, it, it, 720 is not bad. I mean, it, it was kind of the predecessor to I've got, true HD. I've got the bit rate at 2500, 30 frames per second. Oh, I need to stop recording.